So I wrote here, uh, if gravity is the only force acting on an object, we say the object is in free fall. This term is a little misleading because we say free fall, but on the way up, if you're rising, you're still in free fall because gravity is still the only force acting on you. The acceleration is still down. Your velocity just happens to be up, but you're slowing down. When an object is in free fall, it will be accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. If we want to uh, put a direction in, you can call it negative. And you'll notice this time I wrote a with the little subscripted Y, that's my abbreviation for vertical, and that's a lead-in to next lesson when we're going to have a horizontal, which I'll symbolize with X and a vertical component, when we start to look sideways through the air. So if you're wondering why I put the letter Y there, that's because. Y, Y, vertical. Fill in the following key facts about projectiles. So we're going to imagine standing with your tippy toes over a cliff, throwing it up, and then letting it fall straight back down. But it's, you're throwing it up in midair out past the cliff. So it's not going to hit the cliff on the way down. What can you tell me at the top? What can you tell me about V top? Let's call it zero. And if that's our final spot, we could call it VF as well. Uh, we're launching with uh, VI. What can you tell me about the velocity when I'm even with my launch height? Negative VI. Brennan. Repeat it. VI. Negative VI. In other words, if I launch it at 12 meters per second, then James, when the projectile comes back to where it started from, it'll be going negative 12 meters per second. Now in this case, because I've added a cliff, it's going to keep falling, it's going to keep accelerating. V final, first of all, won't be zero, that's after it hits the ground. V final will be bigative than bigger than negative VI. Bigative. Bigger than negative VI. Uh, what can you tell me about T when it gets level with the launch? Well. We have this. Right? Write that down off in the corner there. You got room. And just for review, let's get the T by itself. How would you get the T by itself? Yep. So T equals what, 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 what? Uh, VF VI Don't write that down yet. I'm going to write it down, but I'm just going to change it. VF minus VI over A. Uh, T, even with launch then, is going to be negative VI minus VI over A because we just decided that uh, the V final when you get even with launch is negative. In fact, another way to write this is negative 2 times your initial velocity over A. You can write that if you want. Let me make that bigger. I realize it's messy. So I wrote this. Negative 2 VI over A. What's your displacement when you come back to the same height that you started from? Zero. Yep. Zero. All right. And then I have just before impact, really at impact, what's V? Not zero. What's V? Well, we have this. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2a d, where these are all vectors. That's vf, except that's vf squared. James, how to get rid of a squared? OK, so we're going to write this, a big square root, vi squared plus 2a, negative 9.8, d, Except you'll have to do one more thing. Which way is it traveling when it hits the ground? How could I signify down? How can I mathematically show down? 
you're going to have to insert a negative. Your calculator, when you take the square root, will give you the positive answer. But remember, technically, what's the square root of 9? It's actually plus or minus 3. Your calculator gives you the 3. In physics, if we know we're going down, we know we actually want the minus 3 answer. Just before impact, your displacement equals, and I didn't leave much room there, but you guys can write in. I'll just kind of go like this. Displacement equals the negative height. Why negative? Because you are ending up below from where you started. A projectile is thrown up and leaves a thrower's hand at 10 meters per second. A. How long does it take to reach the top of its trajectory? And B, what's the maximum height that it reaches? OK. Mason, what's A asking me to find? Uh, top, A. top is not one of our variables. What's A asking me to find? How long time? Ah, hopefully now it's Captain Obvious, yeah? yeah. What else do I know? Yeah, what is that? Hmm? Which one? VI. Okay, right? Remember all this stuff? Okay, so VI 10? Yes. I know that. What else do I know? You know the acceleration anytime you're throwing something. Nine point nope, gotta be fussy now. Negative We're back in vector land, yes? What else do I know? Now I have to, that I know for what the question told me. Now I have to customize it to part A. Part A says, how long does it take to reach the top? I know one more thing as soon as they say top. I think you were right, Taylor. No? What do you know at the top? I don't know. I've never been at the top. OK. Yeah. Does that make sense, Mason? For a split second. All right. Hey, this is good review. Which equation has a T, a V, I, an A, and a VF in it? V, equals v, good. Get the T by itself in your head. Would be cool. T equals VF, v, I, and we could even, because uh, VF, sorry, I wrote VI. Did I write VI as 0? VI is 10. Just noticed that. Or maybe the one vanished on me. I don't know. Was there never a one there? Did I write VI as zero? I don't know. My tablet, every once in a while, a number will vanish. Don't ask me why. Um, I could also even say, hey, technically, yes, yeah. just because we're at the top. So it's going to be negative 10, negative 9.8. It's going to be almost exactly one second, not quite. It would be very close. One point oh two. Seconds. Okay. Keep going, Mason. What does B want me to find? What variable did we use for height? Now, in energy, we used an H, but t traditionally, what variable have we used for anything that was in meters? E. Yeah. Have I turned the page? No. So I'm not going to read defic everything. I got my data listed in part A. What were you going to say? I cut you off. No. Oh, I thought you had an, well, we need to find an equation that's got a D in it. Now, if you don't have your formula sheet out, you might want your formula sheet out because we're re reviewing from near the beginning of the year. In fact, I think we're really looking, we're targeting that line of four extra useful equations, right? I think it was about one third of the way down. We had all four of the uh, kinematics equations all in a row. D equals one half, VI plus VI, capitation. That'll get me there. I 
I think also D equals VI, T plus a half AT squared will get me there. In fact, I think also I could use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD and get the D by itself. Now, out of all of these, I think I'm going to use just because it's easiest to type straight into my calculator. No brackets. Although, I guess you could argue with VF being 0, this, you know what? This might even be faster. Let's use your first suggestion. It's going to be 0.5. What's VI? Times, times 1.02. I can almost do that in my head because half of 10 is 5. It's 5 times 1.02. 5.1? 1. 1? Yeah. Five point one meters, about one and a half times as high as my ceiling. You didn't throw this very hard. Okay. How fast does it hit the ground at? What velocity does it hit the ground at? No math required. What velocity does it hit the ground at? Negative ten. If I assume that this person was laying on the ground when they threw it, which is kind of a wishy-washy. Kind of a meh. Okay. Let's keep going. A projectile is thrown straight up at 35 meters per second off a 70 meter high cliff. Find, okay, the time to top. I'll do my T equals. What else do I know? Well, Right at the top, VF is zero. V initial, 35. Oh, I know one more thing. They don't have to tell me this, I know this. Mason, what else do I know that they don't have to tell me that I just know anytime I'm in free fall? What's negative 9.8? What variable is that? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, can't just say a number. You gotta tell me what it is, right? Hey, you know what? We can do the same thing again. T is gonna be VF minus VI over A. It's gonna be zero minus 35 over negative 9.8. Or I could have crossed out, I could have canceled the VI, VF. It's going to be negative 35, negative, try that again, negative 35 divided by negative 9.8. Zero minus 35 is just negative 35. Uh, takes 3.57 seconds to get to the top. Okay. Hayden, what's B want me to find? D equals question mark. Hayden, have we turned the page? Are we still talking about the top? Yeah, I'm not going to relist everything. We got it right there. Hey, which equation can I go with? You know what? Let's use the one that Mason suggested, the one with the 1 half that I always forget about, but it is on my formula sheet. D equals VI plus VF. Sorry, D equals 1 half VI plus VF times T. Why is that one so nice? Mason, what was VF? Zero. Okay, so it's just going to be a half times 35 times 3.57, not squared in this equation. In the other one, the time is squared, but this one it's not. And I'm going to use my answer button. So I'm going to go 0.5 times 35 times, whoop, answer button. Oh, nice. 62.5 meters even. C. Marcus, what's C want me to find? Didn't we find that in B? Why not? 
Oh, we're not starting on the ground on a cliff. Okay, so how about H max? Would that be a good abbreviation for max height? It's the height of the cliff plus the height that the projectile went. I think I can do that in my head. 132.5? Double check me, but I think I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now let's have a little bit of fun here. Boyana, what's D want me to find? Okay, now we're going from the top to the ground. This is different from going from cliff to top. I'm going to redefic now. So I'm going to say, okay, it wants me to find time. What else do I know if I'm starting at the top? Sorry? VI equals zero. At the top, VI equals zero. Okay. Hundred and thirty two point five is sadly wrong. Hmm? Because it's a displacement, technically. Now, if you miss that, I'm going to show you that your calculator would barf at you, and you'd probably catch it. Boyan, I'm looking for an equation that's got T, V, I, A, and D in it. Hopefully that rings a nice bell, comes back to you. Uh, this one's a little nice because, Boyana, what's VI? Okay. In fact, what I really get is this. D equals, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did for, co for kinetic energy. I'm going to write this as AT squared. Instead of a 1 half, I'm just going to tuck a 2 in the bottom because that's the same as timesing by 1 half. And that looks prettier, I would argue. Yes? What are we trying to find? Boyana, what are we trying to find? Okay, how would I get the T by itself? Okay, I'm going to go like this. Crossed out the 2, and I'll put a 2 right there. Yes? What else? Divide by A. Divide by A. Square root. So the new equation is going to be t equals the square root of 2 times d over a, which is going to be the square root of 2 times negative 132.5 all over negative 9.8. Square root of that. You get 5.2586 blah. Now, if you had missed the negative 132.5, here's what you would have done. You would have gone 2 times positive 132.5 divided by negative 9.8. And then when you try to take the square root, your calculator would have given you some kind of an error. So there is a bit of a built-in error check. And again, when that happens, it's really saying, um, you're asking me to do the impossible. In this case, you're saying that you're traveling down, but you ended up above from where we started traveling down. I'm, hello? That's what the non-real, you're asking me to do something. Mine says a non-real answer. Yours will give you an error. So Hayden, there is that built-in error check, okay? So that, square root, answer button, and I get all my stuff has vanished again. I don't know why it does that, but it scares me every time. Uh, oh, uh, T equals... I'll write 5.26 seconds. E.
Brayden, what does E want me to find? Oh. I don't think I need to uh, do any calculating as much as just uh, find some stuff I already have. What's the total flight time? That's not the total flight time. That's the time from the top to the bottom. Ah. Plus, what was it? What was it? What was it? Uh, 3.57. So this number plus 3.57. 8.83. Okay. Uh, before you turn the page, just for giggles, let's find the impact velocity. I didn't ask you to, but just as a good reminder, impact velocity. You can do this from the top down, or you can do this from the cliff down. Let's do this from the cliff. Let's let uh, initial be cliff. In other words, VI is going to be 35. Was it 35? A is negative 9.8. What's my displacement from the cliff? From the cliff, negative 70. This will work. Or you could go VI is 0, start from the very top. A is negative 9.8, D is 2.5. The only reason I might avoid that is if I got that 132.5 wrong, I'm guaranteed to get this wrong, where here I'm using the 35 that they gave me in the question and the 70 that they gave me in the question, and I'm looking for an equation that's got uh, V, VF, A, and D in it. Sorry, V, VI, A, and D in it. There is one. Which one? And this V impact is really VF. Which equation? Come on, people. V, V, I, A, and D. Square, yeah, that one. Keep going, Brett. How to get rid of a squared, Brett? So it's going to be square root of 35 squared minus 2, negative 9.8 negative 70. <gasps> 35 squared minus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 70. Plus 2 AD. Why did I do minus? Because I'm dumb. My calculator was telling me something was wrong because I was getting a negative inside the square root. My universe was saying, can't do it that way. Thank you. Plus, you say, oh, that's better. Oh, square root. 51? Why is 51 wrong? Because it is. Okay, I have to, the only issue with the VF squared equals VI squared equation is if you're finding a V, it's going to give you a scalar result. You have to insert the negative where necessary. When you hit the ground, Hayden, are you traveling downwards when you hit the ground? When you hit the ground, are you traveling downwards when you hit the ground? Say yes. Yeah. When you hit the ground, are you traveling downwards when you hit the ground, Hayden? Yeah. Is that a fairly obvious statement now, Hayden? Yeah. Are you back with me and awake now, Hayden? Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. So I'm going to go uh, negative 51 meters per second. And this is why I said back on the previous page, have to include the negative there. It won't pop out naturally. Uh, holy smokes, one more, we're done. A person bends their knees 20 centimeters, pushes on the ground and flies 50 centimeters into the air. 
find the speed when they leave the ground, their acceleration during the push, and how long they are in the air for, their hang time. We did a lab like this, you may recall. You may not recall, this was before Christmas, but we did a lab like this. We said there was two portions to this question. There's the bend, and then there is the jump in air. In other words, I would recommend that you divide your page in two. What do I know? Well, apparently here, d equals 0.2, and apparently here, d equals 0.5. It's centimeters, so I did the conversion. Is that okay? <sighs> what else do I know? So we're imagining you're bending your knees, and then you're jumping into the air. Let's look at the bend. What do I know right now? VI is, is zero. Whenever you jump, whenever you bend your knees and you squat down for a split second, for a split second at the bottom of your bend, how fast are you traveling, Mason? Zero. Okay. Is VF zero? No. I'll even write VF equals, don't know. Oh, in fact, you know what? That's what A wants me to find. Part A wants me to find the speed when they leave the ground. Sadly, this is not enough. This is not enough. I need more data. Hmm. Let's go to the air. What do I know when you jump? So now we need to use our imagination. I've just straightened out my knees and I've given a mighty leap half a meter into the air. What else do we know? At the top, VF at the top is zero, good. What else do I know? I know the acceleration. What's my acceleration while I'm in the air? Who's, who's speaking? 9 .8. I got to be fussy. It's not 9.8. Uh, while I'm in the air, Kareem. How many pieces of information do I know for the bendy part? Do I know, how many pieces do I know? Two. How many do I know for the jump? You know what, if you know three, you can find the fourth. Let's work with the jump. What else can I find over there? I could find T. And I think I could find VI. Oh, not VI equals zero. VI equals question mark. What can you tell me about this VI? I think that's the answer to part A. Isn't it? Yeah. OK. So let's put a little A right here. Let's do part A. I want to find. VI, I'm not going to relist all my data. I'm looking for an equation that has a letter D, an A, a VF, and a VI in it. Please tell me there is one. Ah! Here we go. You guys needed that. Talk at those awake. Kareem jumped. I even got Marcus. That was pretty good. Hey. And then on cue, right after that, I got a guy yawning and stretching. Really? That's what you're going to give me? OK. Hey, what's your equation, folks? Since it's been a while, let's write that down. 
I want to get the VI by itself. How am I going to get the VI by itself? I guess I'm going to have to move this over. How am I going to move the uh, 2AD over? Divide? Times? Add? Subtract, you say. So if I hear you correctly, you're telling me I'm going to get VF squared minus 2AD equals VI squared? VI what? Oh, I don't need that squared there. All right, so let's get A. My launch speed, VI, is going to be the square root of, what was VF during the jumpy part? Minus 2, negative Kareem 9.8, uh, 0.5. How fast does this jumper leave the ground at? Zero squared. I probably didn't need to type the zero squared. 9.8 square root. 3.13 meters per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Cool. Hannah, what's B want me to find? Oh, you know what? Since that's an answer, I'll put a box around it. Part A, done. Hannah, what's B want me to find? I have no idea what you said. A little louder? When? Oh, during the, the, the uh, this acceleration on the left? Because on the right, it's 9.8, soon as you're in the air, negative. Uh, oh, OK. A equals question mark. Problem is, I still only know two things on the left-hand side. Or do I? I know VI. Where? I don't know VI. V oh, I know VI. It's zero. What else do I know? I know VF? What's VF? Oh, the speed that I leave the ground at, that's the same as the final speed when I finish my bend, when I straighten my legs up? So you're saying that where it says VF equals question mark, I can now scribble up the question mark and I can say 3.1, was it 3.13 meters per second? Cool. I'm looking for an equation that's got D, V, I, V, F, and A in it. There is one. Hannah, which equation has D, V, I, V, F, and A in it? You are correct. Hey, can you get the A by itself for me? I'll give you a hint. Leave the V, F squared where it is. Oh, girl, you just made my heart out of way. So it's going to be 3.13 squared minus 0 squared. You know, Hannah, I probably ne don't need to type in the minus 0 squared on my calculator. Divided by 2 times uh, d is the bend distance, 0.2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And conveniently, I got the 3.13. Uh, stored. So I'm going to go uh, this number squared minus 0 squared. Nat, do you mind if I just don't bother typing in minus 0 squared? It's not going to change anything. Uh, divided by bracket 2 times 0 0.2. What's my acceleration during... By the way, should this be bigger, smaller, or the same size as 9.8? Otherwise, I don't think I'm leaving the ground.
Jaden, what C want me to find? I think there was a part C, wasn't there? Am I going to bend side or on the jump and air side? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to go part C, T equals question mark. What else do I know when I'm in the air? Where are you talking about for VF? You could be right, you could be wrong. It depends when, what at portion. The at the top, okay. I'm, I'm, we can use that. That's only gonna find us the time to the top though. Now we could do that and then just double it. Yeah. Or I think I can go like this. First of all, what's VI? 3.13, yes? Mm -hmm. What's VF when I hit the ground again? Am I starting and ending at the same height? So what's VF when I hit the ground again? Mm -hmm. And while I'm in the air, A is negative 9.8. If I do this, this will get me in one fell swoop. Or you could let VF be zero, but that only gives you time to top. If you want the total hang time, double it. Either of those is perfectly fine. I figure since I'm using the 3.13 no matter what and I'm kind of lazy, I'm going to do it all in one fell swoop. Okay? Is there an equation, Jaden, that has T, A, V, I, and VF in it? Which one? Can you get the T by itself? Okay. Also, I'm hoping this is a nice review of those four equations kind of coming back to you. So it's going to be negative 3.13 minus 3.13 divided by negative 9.8. Bracket, negative 3.13. Oh, is this a fraction? Yeah, is there more than one thing on the top? Yeah, brackets. More than one thing on the bottom? No? Okay, I probably don't need brackets there. Minus 3.13 divided by negative 9.8. 0.64 seconds. Is that okay? All coming, kind of coming together. Yep. For part. Yep. So you ready? In part A, you notice we used VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Don't write this down, just watch. If I had used KE initial plus PE initial equals KE final plus PE final, I would say to myself, well, I'm starting out on the ground, and I'm uh, at the top ending at rest for a split second. I would then say a half m v initial squared equals. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, leave in the uh, kinetic energy for a second. A half m v final squared plus m g h. Okay. Mass cancels. If I go times by two times by two and times by two, I am gonna get a V squared equals, uh, oh, here the two would cancel with that. So uh, VF squared uh, plus two AD. If you're wondering where that equation kind of pops out from, it kind of comes from there. That's where the VF squared equals VI squared. That one I never showed you where it came from. So yeah, conservation of energy would get you there just fine. And to be honest, I probably would have done it that way, except I wanted to review this with you. So we started out with kinematics, and then we've just added more tools to our tool belt. What's your homework? You can try number one. This is all good review for your final. Number two. Three and four. Four is asking you to do it algebraically. If 
five is good. Six is what we just did. Seven is good. You've assigned everything so far. Yeah, I know. Eight is good. I'm going to skip. Uh, skip ten. Eleven is good. Okay. Got lots of time to get this done. And if you have any other missing homework or assignments, you can work on those too.